Um, so uh, welcome to Middlesex University. It's really nice um, for you to, uh, nice of you to come along and um, talk to us, meet us in the best way that we can in these circumstances. Uh, I have a dealer with me here from, um, she's labeled UCAS support, but it's actually a dealer behind that uh, label. Um, and she's from admissions. So she's just going to be uh, keeping an eye on things, making sure I don't run over time, making sure I answer your questions as they crop up. Um, and uh, she'll also be able to answer some of the um, more, um, uh, some of the questions that I can't answer. I'm one of the academics. I'll introduce myself in a minute. Um, I'm one of the academics, so my, my knowledge is somewhat uh, limited. Let's say deep, but limited. Um, so what we're going to do uh, this afternoon is we have, we, we think it's going to take approximately 45 minutes. It may take a little bit less if you don't have any questions. We've got up to an, an, um, you've got up to an hour. We have up to 60 minutes uh, if we need it for, for more questions. Um, there's a great first question. Let's just go straight to the question, which is, do you need to study accounting at university to become an accountant? And the answer is no, you don't. You don't need to study accounting at university to become an accountant. There are different routes into accountancy and it also depends on what type of accountant you mean. Um, let me just talk uh, specifically about what we consider to be a professional accountant or what we call a chartered accountant. So that's somebody who's, who's um, passed all of their professional exams and they're allowed to call themselves chartered accountant. They belong to an institute and they are regulated. Um, so if you want to become a professional chartered accountant, there are several routes into that profession. Uh, one is that you can go direct, and again, this will depend on jurisdiction. I'm going to talk about the UK. Other countries uh, may have, um, will probably have similar routes, but I'm talking specifically about the UK. So in the UK, um, you, can, you can actually go into accounting as a school leaver. So accounting firms will offer school leaver apprenticeships. So that's one thing that you might want to explore. It means you don't come to university, you don't incur three years of university fees, you go straight into accounting, you'll do one year of foundation accounting, and then in your second year at work, you will join the uh, graduates and do a graduate conversion and uh, become a professional accountant alongside the people who have graduated university. So not only do you not come to university and don't pay three years of fees, you're only um, you're only a, uh, you're two years ahead effectively of the uh, of the graduates. Um, so uh, so that's one route. Uh, the other route is that you can do any degree that you want. You can do French, Spanish, engineering, business studies, psychology. And then go in and uh, go in as a, an accountant after your uh, your degree. So that's another option. You could you could do that, or you can come to university, study uh, accounting and finance, and uh, go into a um, go into a training contract after having got a degree in accounting and finance. Um, so the benefits of coming to university are that it's it's good fun. You'll enjoy it. It's a it's a really good and enriching experience rather than go straight from school into work and then work for sixty years. It's a it's a very informative, um, uh, seminal experience. You'll make great friends. You'll have fabulous uh, time. So that might be that might be a, a serious consideration that you actually want to come to university. Um, and then the reason you might choose accounting and finance over psychology or French or general management is that uh, you'll certainly have a good idea of whether or not you want to become an accountant by studying these subjects. And also it accelerates your qualification because a lot of the topics that you study with us and other universities um, grant you exemptions from uh, the professional exams. Um, I hope that answered your question. Uh, anonymous attendee one. Um, the second question is, are you able to do accounting and finance at uni without A-level maths? Yes, you are. Yes, you'll need uh, the equivalent of grade B in um, GCSE maths, 
uh, I don't know what grade B is now, because it's, it's all numbers, isn't it? But but that it that equivalent. But no, you don't need A level maths. Um, okay, th there's a Palish. Thank you for that question. Um, I'm going to leave that one for a dealer to answer in the chat um, because that's a that's quite a technical question and beyond my remit. Is that uh, okay? Sure. Uh, yeah, I will answer them. Can you the chat, please? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Um, good. So keep those questions coming. What we'll probably do now is I'm going to I'm going to give you a little. Well, let me just tell let me just tell you about how we're going to run today. I'm going to share my screen. Um, keep keep the questions coming though. That's absolutely fine. I probably won't answer any more questions immediately um, because I want to give you a little taste of how we're going to be um, teaching you accounting if you choose to come to Middlesex, which I very much hope you, you will. Um, so the title of this live lecture, this mini lecture, is called The Joy of Accounting. And the reason it's called The Joy of Accounting is because we feel very passionate and enthusiastic, not only about accounting, but also about teaching accounting. Uh, it's something that we feel really strongly about and we put huge amounts of our passion and energy into uh, teaching accounting, partly because we love teaching accounting, but also because we love uh, accounting. Um, it's a really interesting uh, topic. So that's why I've called it the joy of accounting. I'm going to come back to the pineapple, but I, I want you to think very carefully about pineapples. Everybody loves pineapples. It doesn't matter if you don't like pineapples. Um, but but uh, one of the reasons we, we, we introduce a pineapple, I'll explain specifically why we talk about pineapples, but it's quite, a, quite useful when, you, when you're in a live lecture, one of the memory tricks you can play is using all of your senses. So if you smell pineapple, can you invoke the smell of a pineapple, or you think about a pineapple, that will, that will give you a strong sensory anchor to this particular session. So later on, when this session is gone and you're going to sleep tonight and your head is going to hit the pillow and you're going to think, oh, pineapples, that'll trigger quite a lot of memories from this um, experience. And there's also a, a, a serious point about pineapples as well, but I wanted to start with that um, and, and explain it later. So this is, uh, this is today's session. I'm going to talk for not much more than 20 minutes now. Um, probably a little bit less and give you a little experience of how we teach accounting. I'm then going to talk a little bit about what you can expect from the teaching and learning environment in September. And I'm sure a lot of you've got questions about whether it's going to be online, whether it's going to be on campus, what happens if things change. So we'll, we'll give some thoughts on how we're going to manage that. And then there's a good um, few minutes at the end for you to ask more questions if you need to. But keep your questions coming and we'll We'll cue those so that we can use the time at the end sensibly. So uh, we don't need to do that. Let's move on. One of the things that we do at Middlesex University is that we think um, quite carefully about where students have come from in terms of their learning journey uh, in relation to accounting. Now, some people will have done some accounting before. Um, whether it's high school or BTEC or some other form, you'll have done some accounting. Others maybe have done no accounting at all, absolutely none. So we make sure that we start right at the very beginning. So if you've done absolutely no accounting, please don't worry. We will, we will take you right from the very beginning and uh, work yourself, um, work you up to a professional level of um, knowledge. Um, just as if you, you'd come with knowledge. It's actually sometimes better to come with no knowledge because we have a very particular way of teaching accounting and very often students who come who've actually learned about accounting before are a little bit resistant to the way that we teach them, but actually it's quite important that we, we do that. I'm going to get on to some um, specifics about accounting first, but I just wanted to share this with you. Does anybody know what those are? Does, does anybody know? Has anyone seen these before?
These are accounting tokens. They're accounting tokens. Some of these tokens are more than 8,000 years old. Some are 10,000 years old. And these accounting tokens have been found all the way from Turkey across the Mediterranean, the Levant, into Mesopotamia, what's now uh, Iran, Iraq, um, all the way across into Western parts of China. Now, don't make the mistake, these are not money tokens. They're not money tokens, they are accounting tokens. Now, there's a wonderful, wonderful book. Uh, I'm not suggesting you buy this, it's quite an expensive book um, called Before Writing. And there's an academic in this book who discovered the purpose of these tokens. She was saying, there, there are thousands of them all over the place. Why are there so many of these tokens? And she was the one who first postulated that these were accounting tokens. That's not money. Accounting tokens are a way of reckoning how much do you owe me? How much do I owe you? It's not money. It's not this is valuable. I'm going to exchange it for goods. Accounting tokens keep account of balances, credit balances between people. Now, this is interesting for a couple of reasons. Number one, it tells us that credit economies were very, very common, even in ancient prehistory times. So uh, we, we have this sort of traditional way of thinking that economists started off as a sort of barter system and then they became more sophisticated and eventually they became credit economies. Well, this turns that on its head and it actually says, no, these economies were never really barter economies. There's actually very limited evidence to suggest that basic economies were barter economies. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that basic economies were in fact credit economies that used accounting tokens to keep account of who owed whom how much money and what was going on, keeping credit balances with people within a community. The second really interesting thing about this is that these accounting tokens predate numeracy. They predate literacy. So if you were to think about, oh, we, we talk about reading, writing, arithmetic. Colloquially, we used to call those the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic. Doesn't quite work, but that's what it was called. Um, but actually, reading, writing, and arithmetic all came after accounting, which is another very interesting uh, part of the, the, the history of accounting. So actually, it was actually the, the requirement for numbers came out of the need for people to know how much was owed to each other. Writing came out of numeracy. So we, we tend to have got our history slightly wrong in terms of um, accounting. Uh, it's actually much more ancient and much more fundamental than perhaps uh, you realised um, and a lot of other historians and economists have realised until relatively recently. Now, let's talk about that pineapple. I, haven't, I, I, I would normally do this in a class. So what, I would, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to you, um, and this is actually how we, we, we run our very first class in accounting. So when you come to Middlesex, you're going to have some, a very similar session to the very early bits of, of this particular lesson. So what do we say when, uh, when you come and you're, you're in class or we're in a virtual class, doesn't really matter. I would say to you, I am going to um, sell you a pineapple. I've got pineapples and you want a pineapple. And one of you is going to come into my pineapple emporium. And because you want a pineapple, I'm going to say to you, what do you want? And you're going to say, well, I want a pineapple. I said, well, I'm not giving them away. So, oh, no, no, I want to buy a pineapple. So you're saying, oh, I want to buy a pineapple. I will say, oh, but I only sell pineapples. And this is, a, this is, a, this is silly, isn't it? Because both know what, what's going on here. Of course you want to buy a pineapple and I have pineapples to sell, which means I can sell you one because you want to buy one. Now, th this, this, this sounds simplistic, but actually it's not. It's, it's a very fundamental point about accounting because accounting, modern accounting, uh, in fact, all accounting, is about recording economic transactions. It's about recording an economic event. So when you come into my pineapple emporium and you say, I would like to buy a pineapple, that's a purchase. You're buying a pineapple. 
that very same economic transaction, from my point of view, is a sale. I'm selling a pineapple. So if we think about this economic event, it, it, it's one economic event, but it has a very different description based on whose story are we telling. And that's another really important point about accounting. Accounting is about telling stories. It's about telling the story of who. Whose story are we talking about? So this whole point about the, uh, the, 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 the transaction with the pineapple anchors us on this fundamental question about whose story is being told. Because if I'm selling you a pineapple, and we're telling my story, the story is a pineapple was sold. If we're telling your story because you came in and bought a pineapple, that same economic transaction has a completely different color and flavor because from your point of view, you came in and you bought a pineapple, a very different transaction from selling a pineapple. So one of the things we spend quite a lot of time thinking about is whose story are we telling? From whose point of view are we telling the story? Now, uh, if this is going to work, I am going to need you to jump onto the Q&A and don't worry about those questions. Um, a dealer is going to uh, make sure that those questions will get answered. So, so don't worry about those questions that haven't yet been answered. We will come back to those. Um, but I need you to jump on the Q&A and I want you to start suggesting to me what type of business this is. Just type your answers, it doesn't really matter. Don't, don't worry about spellings or anything. Use the Q&A and tell me what type of business can you see in this picture? No, can't do that. Okay. Um, all right, well, maybe we'll come back to that because I don't, uh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, so let's have a look. Supermarket, food business, something in the food business, supermarket, retail business. Yes, all of those things. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Very, very good. Excellent, excellent. Bear in mind, um, let's just have a little think. What, what types of things can you see in the photograph? What can you see? Goods, yeah, goods. Can you be more specific? Food, food. Can you be more specific? Bananas, yeah, you can see bananas, yeah. Fresh food, essentials, these are all very general. Could you go to the shop and pick up some essentials? Could you go and pick up some goods, some groceries, specific? What's on the list? What's on the shopping list? Oranges. You might have to look a little bit closely, and maybe take a guess at what you might be able to see. Okay, fruits, fruits, basic goods, cereals, jars, there's bread, there's oranges, there's bananas. Do you know what we call these when they're in a business? Oh, well done, Sammy. Yeah, good one. Good one. I'll come to that in a minute. What do we call all of these goods that we're going to sell groceries? Do you know what we call them? Assets. Assets is one word, but specifically we call these inventory or stock in trade, trading stock.
but, but the correct name is inventory. Inventory is all the things that a supermarket owns that it's going to sell to its customers. Now, Sammy has come up with a good point. Sammy has said trolley. Now, the supermarket doesn't usually sell trolleys. That's not part of its inventory. Its inventory is the things that it's going to put in a bag you're going to pay for and are going to leave the shop with. That's inventory. There are other assets other than inventory. So Sam has said trolley, trolley. So that's a different type of asset, not inventory. Uh, do you know what type of asset that is? It doesn't matter. It's only, it's only words. What, um, what other types of, what, what other assets like a trolley might you be able to see in the picture? That, that isn't inventory. Yeah, fixed assets, shelves, yeah, shelves, yeah, fixed assets. Non-current assets is the correct term, Israel, that's right. Non-current assets, fixed assets, uh, non-current assets and current assets. Shelves, yeah, shelves, anything else? What other assets do you think this business owns that you can't see? Yeah, it owns land, doesn't it? It owns land. Let's let's just do this slightly differently. Let's um let's just have a look here. Who said land? Yeah, land, lots of land. We've got shelving. Somebody said shelving. Uh, we talked about fruit and vegetables, inventory. Uh, somebody mentioned trolley. Um, oh, oh, I love this land. What, else, what, what sits on the land? The supermarket, which is the land. Yeah, the supermarket, which is the land. I love that. Um, Anything else? Oh, I really like this question. That's a that's a great that's a great question. Who said staff? Who said staff? Mm, staff or laborers? Mm, can you see? I've actually put them on the outside of what we call the funding butterfly. I've put them on the outside. I'll come back to staff in a minute. Buildings, vehicles, real estates. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, tills, computer equipment, that kind of thing. Yeah, anything else? Oh my goodness, there's quite an important asset that you've missed off. Quite an important asset you haven't talked about. And I bet you know it. I bet you like it. I bet you'd like more of it. What's missing? Oh, customers, nice one. Oh, Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Yes, cash, cash. That's right, cash. So all of these things, all of these things are assets. All of these things are assets um i don't know what I'm, I'm i'm not there aren't any questions i'm just i'm just asking questions so cash and bank balances people are people are answering in the q a so if you hit q a there should be a little bubble with 62 um okay assets look you, you you've come up with some really interesting things here um there are a couple of things that actually if I had more time, I would like to explore in more detail with you. Ricardo's mentioned capital. We need to be really careful about capital. Um, capital can mean lots of different things to lots of different people. So I'm not gonna say no, but I'm gonna say, ooh, be careful. And uh, Hinali has says the people you pay for the inventory, but if you owe somebody money, that can't be an asset. If you owe somebody money, you can't sell that to somebody else. If you owe somebody money, you can't go to somebody and say, oh, would you like this? It's, I owe the money. Would you like to take that? It's not worth anything, is it? So assets are valuable things. Assets are the things that are really valuable to the business. So we've come up with quite a few of those, haven't we? Um, 
let me just let me just finish up because I, I I know I'm going to run out of time relatively quickly. Staff, I agree with you. Yes, they are assets, but this is a really interesting point about accounting. But a very interesting point about accounting. Not all assets end up in the accounting records. So what we've drawn in this in this part of the butterfly, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you a little bit later if I have time about this system of accounting education that we call colour accounting. So we colour this part of the butterfly green. Don't have to worry about why, but 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 we do. What, what gets coloured, what, what gets included within this wing of the butterfly is what accountants call recognised assets. And recognised just means they're inside the butterfly. There are lots of assets, lots and lots of assets that a company owns, one of which is staff, which accountants say, no, you can't recognise them, or not always. Sometimes we might recognise them. For example, footballers. Footballers we do recognise on balance sheets and statements of financial position. So the, this is going to get a little bit technical, and, and I know I've only got a couple of minutes left, but um, one of the really important aspects about assets is you've told me, oh, land is an asset, or I've said, oh, inventory is an asset. Actually, it's slightly more complicated than that. When we talk about assets, what we're actually saying is somebody's right to something is the asset. Assets are rights. Assets are rights. Assets aren't things in and of themselves. A good example of this is if I have two train tickets, and these two train tickets have face value, and they each have face value of 300 pounds. Now, a train ticket doesn't have any intrinsic value, does it? It's just a piece of paper with some ink on it. So if I hold up two train tickets and I say to you, this one here is for travel tomorrow and you can travel to Edinburgh for £300. This one, it's still got £300 written on it, but it was for travel to Edinburgh last week. This one isn't worth anything. This one is worth something because this one gives you the right to travel. It gives you something valuable. This one, the right has expired. There's no rights left in it. So that gives you a little illustration about assets being rights rather than uh, things in and of themselves. Um, how am I doing for time, Adila? Are we, are we okay? What are we... You still have two minutes. Oh, two minutes. Yes. Two minutes. Yeah. Um, would anyone like, like to ask any questions about this? Because I think uh, I, I would love to do more with you, but but we're we're fast running out of time. Um, it would be great to do more with you. Um, anybody got any questions about assets and why assets are rights and not things, and why staff are outside of recognised assets, but? footballers might not be. So footballers, we have a right to the footballer. We have a right for the footballer to play for us. Um, and that's why they end up on, on uh, statements of financial position, balance sheets, end up within assets. Did I answer all of those questions? Not, not the, not the uh, important questions, not, not your questions, the, the answers to my questions. Great, good, all right. Well, um, I think we can move on. I'd love to say more about this. It's quite, it's really good fun. But I, I want to talk to you a little bit about teaching and learning uh, next semester. So let's, let's do that with a new share. Hopefully you can all see a slide that says learning materials. A dealer will tell me if you can't, but I'm, I'm assuming you can. So one of the things that's quite special 
about the way that we teach accounting, but I'm just going to shout at the dog. No. Sorry. One of the problems, isn't it, with uh, online working? Anyway, there we go. Uh, one of the unique things about the way we teach accounting is that we use this methodology called colour accounting. And every student comes, they get a pack. And this pack includes what we call the basis board, the basis framework. And you get your very own basis board, which is a pop-up accounting framework. This is accounting in a box. And so every student will have their own little accounting system. And we have what we call 16 classic transactions that we will post to the accounting framework. So actually what you end up, um, the way you end up learning is actually by doing some accounting. Now don't be fooled. This isn't, this isn't some silly little game. This is not, this is not a toy. Um, it's playful, it's, it's a very active, interactive way of learning, but it's no, it's no toy. Um, this system that we use to teach accounting can, uh, can be used to teach any accounting at any level anywhere in the world. One of the great things about accounting is that it is a universal system. So what you'll see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five sections. One, two, three, four, five. Now those five sections, assets, liabilities, equity, income and expenses, those five things, those are the same five financial statement elements that every single business uses throughout the world. It doesn't matter whether you're Apple, Facebook, or Esso, or Shell, or Nakamichi Bank, really doesn't matter. Every single business uses the same five elements. So while this may look like, like something that wouldn't necessarily tell you how Apple does its warranty provision accounting, it can. Um, and we use these in commercial education as well. So we use these at uh, Goldman Sachs and um, some law firms as well to teach, uh, to teach um, investment bankers and corporate lawyers how accounting works. So don't, don't let the appearance of this suggest to you that we don't take accounting seriously. We take accounting education very seriously. So that's a rather unique thing and quite good fun. And we'll, we'll send you one of those um, when you're enrolled. The other thing that we do is we have uh, a series of active learning workbooks because uh, I'm going to talk about online and, and the online content. Online is an important thing part of our learning environment now and it is here to stay but also so is writing on your own being able to turn off the machine not worrying about losing connection on the train um, as one of you has has done um, all, all of those things uh, to answer your question uh, there, there are lots of these sessions going on I don't think there's another accounting one but I'm sure I'm, I'm, I know this one's being recorded so make sure you pick up the link to the recording um, I'm sure a dealer can help at the end. So um, yes, online and physical materials. Physical materials I think are really important. And there you go, there's the joy of accounting. We even have a set text, the joy of accounting. Um, so, uh, and then online. Yes, online we are quite, we do have quite a, uh, an extensive set of online resources. And again, you can see in our online resources, that's the last column there, this is an online quiz, we're using the same methodology. So there's a sort of consistency and approach here so that it doesn't really matter whether you're working in one of the workbooks, you're talking in a lecture or a seminar, you're working with your uh, book here, or you're online, there's a consistency of approach in, in the terms of the way that we use uh, what we call this um, basis framework. And there you can see a little close up um, of the basis framework. So let me talk more generally for a, um, three or four minutes about uh, our teaching and learning plans for 2021. Um, we, we, we take quite a lot of pride in the fact that we, we, we encourage um, an active, uh, creative, and collaborative learning approach. Uh, 
uh, and that extends across all of the activities that we take, uh, that you, you and we will take part in as part of your learning journey. So for example, um, all of your reading materials are integrated into the learning, the online learning resources. So if you come to my module, uh, as you're working through the online materials, it'll say, now go and read chapter two of the book. And you click and it takes you to chapter two of the book because we give you all of the set text in digital format free of charge. So all of your, all of your um, reading materials for all of your modules throughout your time at university are provided digitally to you and are integrated as part of the uh, learning um, materials. We have a wide range um, of uh, activities. So activities can be individual study, group study, class study, online study, all sorts of different um, types of learning activities. We actively encourage discussion between students and you have very close contact with teaching staff. You'll have every member of teaching staff, you'll have their work email, you can email them any time of day or night. They won't reply any time of day or night, but you can access um, uh, direct contact with all of your teaching staff. We have student teaching support, we have graduate academic assistance, we have a whole a whole gamut, a whole spectrum of um, staff and students and um, support staff to, to make your learning journey uh, an effective and pleasant one. We're very keen to let you know about progress. So, so you know at any particular point, how well am I doing? Or should, should I be working harder? Or what do I need to do in order to get a first? Um, and, then the, and then about lessons, I, I should probably explain to you a, a little bit about lessons. These vary from module to module. And, and the formats, that there are more formats than this, but generally speaking, there are, there are three formats of lessons um, as a specific learning activity. Uh, one lesson might be a lecture. Now, lectures are generally whole cohort, cohort learning, and a cohort can be 250 students, so a large cohort. In the old days, we would bring 250 students into a lecture hall, and then the lecturer would come in, stand at the top or the bottom of the class in a great big banked auditorium and talk to 200, 250 students. That part of education is going online. So it's very unlikely um, that, that you will be coming to large, uh, um, large collections of, of, of individual, large crowd um, teaching. We're, we're moving away from that. We were actually moving away from that before COVID. So it's not, it's not a direct response to the situation of the pandemic, but um, education is moving away from what we call the age of the sage on the stage. This idea that somebody comes in and just spouts knowledge from the from the front and you all slavishly take notes that that form of pedagogy that form of education um, thankfully is is moving behind us so uh, you we will have lectures there will there will be live lectures online there will also be recorded lectures online and you can either come and join in the live lesson as you are now or you can catch up with the recorded one afterwards so that's the first thing lectures are going to be online the other way in which we teach is through seminars and workshops and seminars and workshops they're similar and there's a lot of overlap between seminars and workshops those are smaller probably more 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 um similar to what you're used to from school uh, 30 or 40 people um maybe 20 to 30 people in a workshop. Uh, that can be a lab workshop where you're all working on computers in a room, or it can be a classroom based, or it could be a workshop based, everyone on round tables, various different configurations. That will be on campus. So we're expecting there to be quite a lot of on campus um, teaching uh, for uh, seminars and workshops. So don't be put off by the fact that the big lectures are going to be online. Um, there's still going to be lots of opportunity for you to come to campus and take part in, uh, in learning in that way. Um, let me just see. Uh, I'm going to leave that slide up there. I'm not going to talk through that because I think 
I've, I've mentioned most of those points already. So why don't we head over to questions? Shall we do that? Let's, I'm just going to go back to the top. Um, I've done that one. Are you able to do that? Yes, done that. Um, along with university experience, doing university will help with accounting in the future in terms of knowledge of accounting. Yes, that's true, Hinata. Yes, of course it will. But also, accounting firms, if you're being trained in a professional services firm, they can teach you about accounting. I would say university lecturing about accounting is broader. It's more questioning. It's, 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 um, it, 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 I think, I think there are lots of advantages to it. Um, training within a professional services firm is going to be much more, um, it's going to be much more uh, transactional. Learn this and then you can, then we can charge you out at the right way, right, rate. Uh, uh, in academia, we can be more reflective and questioning and challenging. Um, can I enter accounting at university with a BTEC level three business national foundation diploma? I'm going to leave a dealer to answer that one. Please will you answer that one? That was at 4.08 p.m. Um, sure, I will answer that. Uh, does, um, I'm, I'm at 4.13 p.m. in the q and I don't know if you can see the questions or not. Maybe only I can see them. Can I, um, does Middlesex offer opportunities of studying ACA and SEMA? Yes, we, you, you, you study ACCA modules, SEMA modules, and ICAEW modules. So any of the big professionals, um, uh, professional exams, the professional institutes, yes, we're, we're our, a lot of our modules are aligned to them. Not all of them, you're going to have to choose your program carefully. So if that's a big deal for you, make sure that when you're selecting a particular program, that you're selecting the one that has the ACCA or the SEMA accredited modules. The short answer to that is it's, it's accounting and finance. Uh, another question, um, as a first year student will be planning to study accounting Middlesex, are the topics we learn more about the more of the information we learned in A-level or it's something completely new? Uh, well, th that'll obviously depend on what you studied for A-level. If you've done no accounting before, then it's all completely new. If you've done some accounting before, then you'll, you'll, you'll recognize some topics but as you've already probably already seen, we take a very different and, and deep approach. So I think the answer is uh, is um, whether or not you've done accounting or not, you can expect something new. Uh, somebody has asked, what is the difference between accounting and finance and accounting and management? Um, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that actually have a look at the specific programs that the universities that you've applied to offer, because the program will determine what the content of the particular degree is. So what you'll find is all universities will call their degrees slightly different things. If you dig in underneath, most UK universities, in fact, all, all that I'm aware of, run all of their programs on what are called a modular basis. So for example, at Middlesex, you will study four modules every year. It gets slightly complicated because we have half credit modules. So you'll, in the first year, you'll have two full credit modules and four half credit modules, but four full-time equivalent modules. So it's the modules you want to look at to see how much flexibility you have um, to choose uh, what it is that you want to study. Accounting and management would generally be a broader topic than accounting and finance, which is going to concentrate on those two topics more specifically. Good. Let me just skip down. Um, the, 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 somebody's asking about uh, whether there's going to be another one of these sessions. I don't know the answer to that. There'll be a recording. What's the difference between accounting and finance? That's a really good question. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's not an easy question to, to answer quickly. Um, Accounting is a little bit of what we've just been playing around with. Accounting is about how do we record and report economic transactions in order to make better decisions. And 
who's going to be making those decisions could be investors could be lenders it could be the government it could be all sorts of people but accounting is really about reporting financial position and performance finance is specifically interested in how are entities by that i mean organizations companies individuals even how are they financed is it with debt is it with equity is it through leasing is it through a mixture of those what's the most optimum mix so how is it best to finance a business that's not money run but it's the other side but another thing um da, 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 da. so I, I hope i've done the difference between accounting and finance uh what is taught in the foundation year um okay what i'm going to suggest for for that is you go to our website so you go to mdx.ac.uk. Um, Adila, can you pop in the pop in the link in the chat, please? And uh, you can go to the foundation page website, and it'll tell you very specifically what uh, the topics are that we study in foundation. You're going to be studying things like there'll be some accounting, uh, there'll be a little bit of law, corporate governance. Uh, there's going to be some ethics. Business ethics is quite a big topic at the moment. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, can I say I attended this lecture for my personal statement? You can, if you think that's interesting for your personal statement. Why not? Why not? Don't say you hated it, though. Say something nice about it. Um, a uh, good question here about internships. Do any of the big four firms offer internships at the university? Well, the very short answer, if I'm interpreting your question very specifically, the big four firms do not offer Middlesex University internships. The big four firms don't offer any university internships. The big four firms will offer students internships. And we have a, an office within the university, the placement office, that will be working incredibly hard to trawl the whole market for all internships and placements and making them available to you. But it is uh, very much up to you to take up the opportunity of internships. Um, so I hope I've answered that. Lots of opportunity for internships, but you've got to do it. Oh, I missed out a couple of questions. Da, da, da. Done that one. Yeah, so another student is saying, my background is different. I'm, I'm, a, I'm from a medical background. So I don't know anything about accounting and finance. Will you be able to study it? Yes, we, we assume even students who come in with some accounting background, we assume you know nothing. So you don't have to worry about anything. If you want to study accounting and finance and you don't know anything about it, don't worry. All you need to come uh, with is enthusiasm and a willingness to learn. Um, Palash, I'm not quite sure what you mean by a placement after bachelor's. I think what you mean by that is a job. Isn't that what you mean? Um, so what, what, can you clarify your question? I'll come back to it. So you're, you're saying, does, does Middlesex offer placement after bachelor's? Well, after you, after you graduate, you can stay with us and do a master's. You can go somewhere else and do a master's or go and get a job. Um, the uh, the um, visa rules are, are being updated at the moment, so I can't be too specific if you're an overseas student, but our expectation is that overseas students will be allowed uh, leave to remain for two years after graduating, so you can work for two years in the UK before your student visa expires. Um, how difficult is the maths concept applied in accounting and finance? Well, that depends how difficult you find maths. If you find maths really difficult, then uh, maths in accounting is going to be really difficult. Um, if you find maths easy, then it's going to be easy. It's a tricky question to answer. What I would say is that in accounting, the maths is generally pretty straightforward. There's not, there's not a huge amount of maths you have to worry about. In finance, yes, 
there's a, the maths is a slightly more complex. You have to do a little bit of discounting using interest rates, compounding, all that kind of thing. Um, but I, I, as long as you're, as long as you, you know, the requirement is that you have a grade B equivalent of GCSE. That's your standard studies, not your advanced studies. So as long as you can, as long as you can meet the requirement, you don't have to worry too much. If you know that numerical work really isn't for you, then maybe think about doing something other than accounting. Um, oh, um, Adila, I don't know the answer to this last question, which is about accommodation. Um, can you apply for accommodation if Middlesex is the insurance choice? I don't know the answer to that. Sorry. Um, I will answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Palash, I, I hope I answered your question. I'm going to say I did, so ask it again. Oh, does auditing and taxation appear in the module? Yes, it does, Cassim, but not until your third year. So your first year, we're doing um, introduction and, and foundation not foundation level it's it's advanced it's 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 a challenging module um but but sort of basic entry level second year you go into advanced level and then third year you specialize so into auditing taxation whatever else it is but yes auditing and taxation appear in the modules and you get exemptions from the professional exams if you choose those modules um can you change your subject choice from finance to accounting when I enroll? I'm glad you asked that, Isra. So uh, what you'll see in the slide is that um, the department uh, is accounting, banking and finance. Now, it doesn't matter whether you come in with a specialism in accounting, banking or finance. Everybody does the pretty much the same first year. So it's quite easy to change your program um, choice early on. It's, it's not going to make a very big difference. Um, so yes, yes, you can, is the answer to that. Obviously, the later you leave it, the more difficult it becomes. Uh, choose accounting. Oh no, oh, I shouldn't say that. Um, after I finish the three-year course, well, I have to focus on one of the routes. So a master in accounting or finance. No, you don't have to do anything. After three years, you'll graduate uh, with a with a, um, a bachelor's um, degree, and um, you can you can go on your merry way, go and get a job. You don't have to do anything. You can do a master's, but you don't have to. Absolutely not. No. Um, oh, that's a nice question. Is there a lot of coursework in the course? Is there a lot of coursework? Well, every module will have a mixture of coursework and exams. If it, it'll depend on the modules that you choose. Some modules will have only coursework and no exam. Other modules will have more exam and a bit of coursework. So if, you're, if, you're, if you have exam anxiety, if you really hate exams, there are options to choose modules that are less uh, exam focused. The only thing I would say is, um, if you're interested in professional accreditation, you want the modules with the exemptions, then uh, then you are going to um, have to study some exams because there are some requirements that you study part of the module with exams. Uh, so a mixture is the answer. Um, and uh, there's a specific question about overseas students, which a dealer is answering. Um, oh, another really good question. What jobs can I go into after I finish the three-year course apart from accounting? Well, that is an interesting question. Uh, if you're already thinking you don't want to become an accountant, maybe think about the degree you should be studying. But, you know, um, the answer is an accounting degree is a degree. Uh, if, you study, if you study any degree, you, you leave with all of the um, intellectual, critical, thinking skills, the reflective skills, all of the experience that that period of three years at university has taught you. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really worry too much um, about well, being forced down into a particular route. If you want to come and do an accounting and finance degree and then become a priest, then that, 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 that's a possible route. It's an unusual one, but it's a possible one. Um, 
I don't think there are many jobs that you can't go into uh, by having studied accounting, apart from perhaps um, dentistry, veterinary and medicine. But apart from that, it's a, it's a pretty broad degree. You're, you're, you're pretty employed, widely employable. Um, Oh, thank you very much. Somebody's just admiring my background. Yes, somebody, somebody actually asked me. Oh, yeah, and the, and the dog. Yeah, making it look look pretty too. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Um, somebody asked me if it was one of those virtual ones, and I had to go and walk to prove that it wasn't. It isn't. It's it, this is my little den. Uh, thank you. Um, can the contents from accounting, can they apply to finance as well? I'm not really sure I understand the question. The programme that we run, generally, if you'll come in and you will study accounting and finance. Um, are, you, are you talking specifically about, can you do an accounting degree and go into the financial services industry? For example, uh, investment banking or retail banking or fintech? Um, then, then I think the answer is yes. Uh, Look, I, I, as I said in part of the lecture, accounting is a universal technology. Uh, you can go into the National Health Service, you can go into the Army, you can go into the Navy, you can go into education. Um, they all need accounting professionals. So yes, contents from accounting are universally applicable. I think I've answered that. Um, What's unique about this uni compared to others? Well, that's a very hard question to answer. And I'm not sure, um, I'm not sure that I, I'm in a position to say what makes us unique. What I would say to you is you go and you go and have a look at the universities and trust your instincts. Where do you get where do you get a feel for where you would like to be? Don't I'm not I'm not saying that as a as a kind of th throwaway thing. Um, you you know you you can you can tell a lot by a university by engaging with it so you're doing all the right things come to the come to the sessions go to the open days talk to the academics how do they talk to you do they answer your questions do you think they've got honesty and integrity about the way they answer your questions is this a place where you would feel at home i mean those are all questions for you um, I actually don't spend a lot of time looking at other universities, so I'm not the best person to make a comparison. Um, I can tell you that I love, uh, I love where I work and I love the courses that I teach, um, but I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I, I hope you don't feel I'm ducking the question, but I really don't know. Um, you, you tell me, you tell me when you've, when you've done your uh, research. Um, uh, there's a question about English support, um, Adila. If you can, if you can answer that that, that question about um, students who 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 don't feel particularly confident in English, uh, you know, you're, th there is a, there is a minimum requirement for your English language. If you don't meet the minimum requirement, you won't be able to come. Um, but um, I think a dealer is is answering that. Whew, there we go, it's five o'clock. We used up our full hour and I have answered all of those questions, I think. I, I do hope so. So um, please uh, feel free to leave the session. Um, if you've still got questions to ask, then please, uh, please carry on and keep typing your questions in the Q&A. But as far as the session is concerned, the session is now over. Thank you so much for coming. Good luck in your um, search for a place. And I very much hope that uh, you'll come and see us in September. Oh, thank you very much. It's been great. It's been good fun for me too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Take care, everybody. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Cassie. Good, Palash. I hope I answered your question. I, I, I don't think I was very specific, but I hope I got there in the end.
Great, I think we're done. Uh, yeah, well, um, where's the recording, Adila? Do you know? I'm not sure about that, but if it, there, it's been recorded. Yeah. So I think it will be online. So how will, how will the attendees access it? I am not sure about that. I can check and let them know. Just, okay. Just give me a minute. Um, if you if you have an accounting degree, so so there's a question here which says if you graduate with an accounting degree, do you have to start at the bottom when you start working with an accounting firm? The, the answer is, um, in a way, you're you're going to start at the bottom wherever you start. But, but in terms of academically, what you can do when you study an accounting degree is you can choose modules that give you an exemption from your professional exams. So in that, to that extent, you do have a little head start over people who don't have um, an accounting degree. So you, you've got a head start in terms of your, your professional progress. In terms of your progress within the organisation, you're going to start at the bottom and work up with everybody else. Does that answer your question? I hope so. Great, great. And in regards to where can they find the recording, uh, the link will be distributed to the ones okay. that have edited uh, so yeah we will distribute the link okay so everybody who attended is going to get the recording yes great lovely thanks adila no worries. good i think we're done thanks for your help today uh what would make me stand out compared to those oh, well that's a really good question actually um what would make you what would make you stand out um well i would i would say being somebody who takes up all the opportunities that are given to you. So you come to university and you join the societies, you do the extracurricular activities, you make the most of the environment around you, you, um, you volunteer somewhere, you, you take a job part-time or whatever that, that, that supports your learning. Um, you know, you, you're the person who's gonna make you stand out. Um, it's not going to be, oh, I chose this module and therefore you're going to stand out. So it, it's being an enthusiastic and engaged and committed part of your community. That will make you stand out. I hope that answered your question. Great, good, thank you. Good, well, we, we've run a little bit over time, so I am uh, going to call an end to the meeting there. Is that okay with everybody? Great, all right, nice to see you all. Take care.